and welcome back to the Dogs Queensland video news tra channel. I'm Ashlyn Trevin and tonight we are at the Queensland Dog of the Year. It's the Night of Nights and I'm joined by the wonderful Tim Thomas who has been instrumental in organising it. You. How are you feeling? Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, it's been raining the last week and uh, we've finally had some good weather pretty much yesterday and today. So. It's an amazing event. I think this year, probably out of the five years that I've been involved with it, have, has been the most smooth uh, running yeah. of the events, I think. so. And we've seen a bit of a dialing back of some of the... We've tried some new things over the last few yep. years. Gone back to basics this year, and it looks... The grounds look beautiful. Yes. The, the exhibits are absolutely fantastic. Everything's going smoothly. So how are you feeling about that, that choice? Um, I think the I think in the 20 years I've been involved in Dogs Queens and the grounds have actually not looked better ever. Um, it's this is not a filter, it's really this not, green. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it is really this green. And uh, we've gone for a little bit of a mix this year. We have four international judges and two interstate judges as opposed to the normal six international judges. And our interstate judges haven't judged in Queensland for a while? No, so one of our judges, uh, Aramis Lim from South Australia, he has not been to Queensland for about ten years. Wow. Uh, it's just been a judging choice of his and he's taken this assignment for his first time for a very, very long time. Exciting Birgit, stuff. Uh, our other judge, Birgit Ferguson, was here three years ago, so it's been quite a while since Birgit's been here as well. So all the dogs are new, fresh, so you haven't yep. seen them. It's, yeah, it's Yeah, the, the judges have not seen these dogs before, and a lot of them they would have never seen uh, yeah. been shown. So that's the whole point about tonight. Very exciting. Now, it's very prestigious. Everyone's dressed up. Yep. We're just off kickoff now. Yep. Just run us through how many dogs we're going to see and okay. what the process is going to be for the judges yep. as we go through. So uh, today in the puppy competition we had 117 exhibits actually turn up today um, and we have in the dog competition around about 60 exhibits in the afternoon from three o'clock we have been cutting them down to a top 32 in each competition and in about half an hour I'd say we'll be kicking off off that top 32 Wonderful. It's exciting stuff. We're going to get going. Tim's being waved at from behind the, yeah, behind the camera. Behind. And uh, thank you so much. We can't wait. It's uh, our I night of nights. Well. It's good. And you guys have done an amazing job. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, wherever I'm not in your way, I'm just you trying to stand out of the way.
All right, our two candidates from this draw making their way around, doing a circle and making their ways to the marker. Our Dachshund miniature smooth on the blue marker. Our Belgian Shepherd on the red. <laughs> it is tough when you're the little one and you have a, a big one with a lot of presence behind you. Two beautiful puppies. Ju judges have made their choices now. See who they how they voted. A blue for the ducky. A red for the shepherd. And a red. The Belgian shepherd will be going through. I don't think we've had a single unanimous vote so far. It shows you how beautiful these puppies are. All right. A round of applause. We will see the Belgian Shepherd again who <laughs> takes Handler for a run. That makes me happy. I'm glad it's not me running. <laughs> As they make their way out, we have our next two puppies from the top 32. Our Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And our Irish set are coming through. <laughs> I will say the temperature is starting to drop. Got up to 28 degrees out here earlier today. I don't know exactly what the temperature is now, but it's definitely much cooler than that as the, the Queensland dew humidity starts to settle in. And we all start to get a bit damp and a bit frizzy. Staffordshire Bull Terrier in front. That will be our blue. And our Irish setter or red setter on red. That makes sense to me. Starting with our Staffy. Now, of course, one of Australia's most popular breeds, um, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Not to be confused with some of the others, like an American Staffordshire Terrier, totally a different breed. Still of those Bull Terrier sort of bull varieties. But, um, the Staffordshire is, is from the UK originally, that's where the breed developed. And they are fantastic family dogs. But as with any dog, your best bet if you want to guarantee a healthy puppy with a good temperament is to contact these breeders that you see here tonight or ones like them that are actively showing. They do their health testing. Obviously you can't show a dog that's going to eat somebody. So the temperaments um, are at least taken into consideration for breeding. Uh, if you want a family pet, of course, your best bet is to find breeders, whether that's through Dogs Online or through the Dogs Queensland website, just to get you started. Staffordshire Bull Terrier also have a breed club who can point you in the right direction if you want to make sure you're buying from an ethical registered breeder. If we move over to our gun dog in the back there, an Irish setter. Setters also come in a number of varieties. They are totally separate breeds, so, um, not just different colours. The Irish setters are always red. A Gordon setter is always black and tan. They're a heavier setter. An English setter does come in some different varieties, but they're generally white with some colouring um, patches on them. And they're sort of the medium breed. The Irish Setter a gun dog. Our Staffordshire Bull Terrier a terrier from the Terrier group. <laughs> As they move out and back, you may see when our lovely handler presents this terrier to the judge. Generally, and he may or may not do it, but generally they will pause their dog more either straight on or to an angle and the judges will then make their way around to the side. So they want to see that beautiful chest, um, deep chest of the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. 
and beautiful face and expression. I tend to stand more square on than side on. As the terrier finishes his lap, our Irish setter puppy ready to move out and back. Now setters, their job when you're out on the hunt shooting game is that they set game, which basically means they run into the water and splash around so that the game flushes out <laughs> and you can see where they are. <laughs> setter going in for a kiss. All right. Now, Steward, letting our handlers know to take our dogs around and to their markers. Judges have got post-its in hand, not making immediate decisions here. Um, not making quick decisions at all. They're all three standing off camera. You can't see this, but I'm looking. None have written on their papers yet. Oh, we've got one. One's writing. Two's writing. There we go. Three have made a decision as our handlers set their dogs. <coughs> All right, our steward has the results. How will the votes go? Okay. Our votes are in. Oh, it's a unanimous vote for the first time. And the winner is blue. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier has three from three votes and will be going through. And the ring steward quickly reminding, wait, 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 go around and do a lap because we've got plenty of time. <laughs> As they go around. Okay. All right, our next two puppies of the year making their way in. So in front, a breed that you may not recognize, a Kerry Blue Terrier. And behind, of course, a gorgeous French Bulldog from the non-sporting group, Group 7. money in your handbag because I'll keep it if you yeah. <laughs> I don't think no, you so. have children so yeah. you have no money in your handbag <laughs> probably got some like half chewed up gummy bears and like a dummy <laughs> 
The Kerry Blue Terrier is, is an interesting, just as far as colour, just out of interest, I was doing some research earlier this week about the dilute colours. So usually a blue is, is what's known as a dilute from the solid black. But the Kerry Blue is, is not technically a dilute. They, they're born a dark colour and they have <laughs> any kiss with the judge. I wish I was getting the Kerry Blue kiss. Um, as they get older, the coat colour lightens and lightens to that steel grey that, that, that looks blue. Um, so a true dilute coat colour. Uh, they're born that light sort of steely colour and they stay that colour. Um, a dilute breed colour also has a blue nose and, and blue pigment around the eyes as well. Kerry Blue Terrier is a wiry, curly coat texture. And I have absolutely no idea whether they clip them or they hand strip them or what they do. Maybe they hand scissor them. They could do any and all of those things. But you don't need to keep them. If you want one as a pet, you don't need to keep them in full coat like this, trimmed this way with the beard and, and the face. You can have them in a more easy to manage clip for around the house. Uh, Kerry Blue making full use of the ring. I'm looking absolutely beautiful. All right. Judge's attention moved on to the French Bulldog. I love seeing a beautiful, squidgy French Bulldog face. Fun fact, Hugh Jackman has a French Bulldog in this exact colour. I see photos in Us Weekly all the time. <laughs> French Bulldog making his way around the ring. He will be on the red marker, our Kerry Blue on the blue marker. Are you sure this all happened by chance? Red setter on the red marker, the Kerry Blue on the blue marker. Just fits in too well. All right, our judge is making a choice. As the dogs make their way around the ring and then in front of their blue and red markers. It is very interesting that so far we, we have not had much of a consensus. We haven't had, we've only had one round where there have been three judges make the same choice. I've lost track of how many we're up to. I think it's 16. So about halfway through the breed judging now. The judges have made their choice. I'm glancing over to the stewards. We have one vote for blue, one vote for red, and a blue. It's the Kerry Blue Terrier going through to the next round of the Queensland Puppy of the Year competition. Oh my God. Each puppy's going to do a lap of honour before they exit the ring. Oh, we've ditched the lap. Yeah. I think that's... As much as I don't want to take any attention away from each puppy, it's shaping up to be quite a long evening, so... Here we are. I noticed this purple suit earlier. Another Dachshund, a miniature smooth coat, smooth haired variety, I should say. And coming up behind from the toy group is a toy group. Is a Pomeranian. I'm getting confused by the uh, loudspeaker in, in my ear as well. So we had earlier tonight a Samoyed, one of the largest Spitz breeds from the utility group, Group Six, the Pomeranian 
by contrast, is one of the, or is the smallest Spitz breed. It's amazing to think, isn't it, that they're related somewhere down the track. And the Pomeranians usually weighing in at a hefty two to three kilos. <laughs> Same way it's considerably larger than that. <laughs> it's nice to see two tabled dogs. Dax and getting a good look. Now see underneath the Pomeranian. It's an interesting coat, that Pomeranian Spitz coat. It looks like it should feel like fairy floss, but in fact, they have a dense undercoat that lifts away from the skin. And then um, what you can see over the top, probably the, the darker colored hairs uh, are called guard hairs and they actually should be quite coarse um, and, and, and stiff. So it looks like it should feel like fairy floss but that's, that's really not what they're going for. It's a thick, dense, beautiful coat that you can see here on this puppy and it does change. The puppy coat is softer uh, and more delicate than the, than the full grown adult coat. but always poofy. That's the official term, although probably won't find it in the breed standard. Our judges really taking their time to make sure they've really got a good idea of what they like. As they go over each judge, each dog, they'll be thinking, you know, what's the breed standard and, and, and how close is my interpretation of that breed standard to what I see in front of me here on the table? So moving our dachshund out and back is interesting. I, I feel like this one moving a little bit quicker than, than perhaps um, one, with, one of the ones or the ones we saw earlier. I don't know, and I'm not sure. I'm not a dachshund specialist. Couldn't tell you how fast they should move, but but to me that looks nice and free and and, and an easy, um, precise movement, which appeals to me. <laughs> Little Daki getting lots of cheers. And as we move our attention to the Pomeranian, one of the, if not the, smallest puppy here tonight. Not sure if there are any, actually, no, there aren't any child puppies through. So our Pomeranian. Oh, isn't that cute? I just want to smush his little face on my face. But they can't do that. Definitely frowned upon. No smushing. <laughs> Until after the show, at least. The Pomeranian getting a good cheer as well. That's one of the lovely things, I think, about getting involved in, in showing dogs. There really is a community. And um, you get a good social group comes out to support you at lovely events like this. The dogs make their way to the markers. A dachshund will be on the blue marker. <laughs> and the pom will be on the red marker. There we go. Close competition. We seem to have our ducky supporters up one end and our pom supporters down the other. Our steward has collected three votes. It's nice being able to see a little pom face in the shot there. All right, ready to read them out. Blue for Ducky, red for Pomeranian. Hi, 
Here we go. A vote for the Pomeranian. Something's funny. Two votes for the Pomeranian. Three votes for the Pomeranian tonight. <laughs> oh, she does smush him. Oh, I am jealous. As the dogs make their way around the ring. Yeah, next two standing by as the little legs make their way out. <laughs> All right. Our next two puppies making their way in. Oh, I've lost my catalogue, so I have to wait and see what breeds. But it looks like we have a smaller breed in front and a big one behind again. From the toy group, our Italian Greyhound. As you can see, that cute prancing movement. And here we have behind our German Shepherd dog from the working group. It's interesting, I've recently found out that at German Shepherd Specialties, you're allowed to have two handlers because the dogs keep running and the handlers get absolutely gassed. They need someone else to take over and keep running them. All right, here we have Italian Greyhound on the table. And Italian greyhounds have very delicate bone structure. Those little legs need lots of care. So if you're interested in Italian greyhound as a pet, they are generally better off uh, with families without children or, or with older children just because they are delicate and can easily be injured uh, of rough play. There's no dragging these ones around by, by the tail or the leg. Not that my toddlers do that. <laughs> that being said, I wouldn't leave them unsupervised. Seven news reporter. How's mum? She back home? Daryl. I've got to keep moving. He'll get cramps in his legs and sit down. I've got to get up again. A German Shepherd dog at the back here. Of course, one of the most recognisable working dogs. I love the story. Uh, it's a German Shepherd named Gavel, who is the governor of Queensland's dog, who was supposed to be a police dog, but he was altogether too friendly. So he failed at police dog school and instead ended up a pet. So if you ever uh, want to go and see him at Parliament House in Queensland, Gavel's usually there greeting visitors. All right. Now you notice our handler here with our Italian Greyhound isn't old. <laughs> there is a wonderful junior handlers competition. Um, obviously tonight is not a junior handlers competition, but anyone that's aged over seven years can show in a championship show. Um, under seven um, for safety reasons, unable to, but yeah, from seven years old, that young, you can get started in dog showing and then there is a separate junior handlers competition. Again, you can find out stacks of information about junior handlers at the Dogs Queensland website www.dogsqueensland.org. There's also Facebook pages, so that probably would be my first point of call. If, if you're at home, you've bought a puppy or, or you've got a dog that's got some papers, it doesn't have to be entire, you can have a desex dog, um, enter him in a show, bring him along, get involved in the junior handlers competition. If you happen to win at junior handlers, um, you might get a trip to another state to compete in the finals. So yeah. Worth looking up if you're interested. Now, German Shepherd getting a good cheers and make short work of the ring. All right, and I 
as each dog makes their way around to the marker. The German Shepherd, of course, giving our little Italian Greyhound plenty of space because he's going to get to his destination quickly. Beautiful. All right, our judges are making a selection. Our ring steward standing by. A decision has been made. Tickets are being handed to the announcer. Our Italian Greyhound on blue, a German Shepherd Dog on red. Three votes for the German Shepherd Dog. So the steward indicating the German Shepherd to go in front, make the way around. Oh no, are we doing it? We are doing it. <laughs> Our next two, another Italian Greyhound, and a Collie Ruff. Now, sometimes you might see what looks like a little collie ruff floating, ar floating around. And that's not actually a little collie ruff. That would actually be a Shetland Sheepdog. Same group, still working dogs. Collie ruffs are just that much bigger. The collies also come in a smooth variety. And actually, it's, it's interesting. I, I saw some uh, not long ago. And you have to look twice, they don't even look like the same dog without all of that coat, but you can see, it's interesting to see the smooth, collie smooths, um, and see what they look like underneath all of that beautiful coat.
next two puppies lining up now, making the collie rough making the way around the ring. As the dogs move to their markers, we have our Italian Greyhound on blue, Collie Ruff on red. And the judges are handing over their decisions. So far, only two unanimous choices. Okay. One for blue. One for red. And a blue. And a blue. The Italian Greyhound will be going through to the next round. Pause before the next two come in. In front for the utility group, we have a boxer. And coming behind is a German wirehead pointer. Group six is the utility group, and the boxer with a big tail wag, having a look. And behind, a German wirehead pointer from the gun dog group. Judges still very thoroughly examining our pumps. Can you wait.
A German wire-haired pointer puppy making his way back. Our dogs, Queensland, Puppy of the Year, 2018. Round we go. Judges have their post-it pads. As you send everybody around. The boxer will be on the blue mark and the German wire-haired pointer on the red mark. The, a blue for the boxer, one red, and a blue for the boxer who's doing it in the next round. Just on camera, you probably saw the boxer took exception to the blue marker there, as he should. We like reds here in Queensland. <laughs> a beautiful boxer puppy, just beautiful. Send them both around, both beautiful. Of course, a wonderful achievement just to get through to the top 32. It's amazing. All right, let me stumble over this one. A petite basset, Griffon Vendine. I got there in the end. Petite basset, <laughs> sort of losing PBGB, and the. Staffordshire Bull Terrier coming up behind. Oh, are you going to put the PBGV on the table? Yes, we are. Obviously, don't spend a lot of time in the hound ring. Uh, Staffy, you see what I was mentioning earlier, the Staffy's they stack them up for the judges at an angle like that. So you can sort of see that beautiful deep chest and front and head there. We've got a wibbly wobbly table. Steward to the rescue. If we had daylight saving, it's quarter past ten. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> love and affection. <laughs> Yeah.
All right, judges have now examined both of our puppies, watched them on the move. Now Staffy making her way around. Pete Bassett making its way around to the marker. Safi behind, so our Petite Bassett Griffon Vendine on the blue marker and our Staffordshire Bull Terrier on the red marker. Our judges. Two have made quite a quick decision and one is taking her time. It's not sure. Tough call to make. There we go. Je votes are in. The steward is opening the papers. We seem to have three votes. Three for the Bassett. So he goes through to the next round, number 62, and remains blue. All right. <laughs> Can we zoom in on the Bassett cameraman? That is gorgeous. <laughs> He's bouncing around. He's gorgeous. All right. We have another boxer and a bearded collie. Boxer from the utility group, group six. And the bearded collie is a working dog. Bearded collies seem to be a lot more popular when I was a kid. I used to see a lot of them. These days, you don't see them as much, probably because as life gets busier, you know, the coat does take some grooming, does take some attention. So, our boxer again, one of the guardian type of breeds, but another breed that's just a wonderful family dog. Quite quite active, they'll keep up with you if you if you the type of family likes to get out and go for runs, the beach, the park, the boxer will be right there with you. Brilliant at obedience as well. You can get that recall down pat which makes park time a lot easier. Um, but they are not as active as perhaps our working breeds. I was speaking to a bit of collie breedier, breeder not long ago. Got in, got a cuddle. Everyone knows I love a smoosh. And um, it seems to me that the beardies of the working dog types have a, one of the more um, more relaxed temperaments, but very clever dogs. So when you when you're living and, and dealing with clever working dogs, then they need, of course, all the proper training and things so that life is lovely and you don't end up with holes in every single bit of your garden hose. <laughs> If you ever get the chance to come to an all dog sports spectacular, it's usually held straight after Eka in August um, here in Queensland, so we've just missed it for this year. But if you get a chance, uh, this year they were doing some duck herding. So, uh, all the interesting things that all these different breeds can do. All right, down to our final look for our judges. Two of three. Ready to see some movement. Our South Australian judge taking an extra moment just to have a look at that bearded collie coat. If it's under that coat, don't be fooled, there's a working dog. 
Our boxer on the move. Our boxer having a bit of a jump around on the way back, so Handler saying, you know what, let's start that again. Great move, very good. So you want to give the judges the opportunity to see what the dog looks like and how they really do move. <laughs> All right, and we're taking our puppy around. Bearded Collie, out of shot, getting ready for a run as well. Judges moving their attention to that silky coat. Judge is pausing just to look at the outline of the working dog. Moving around to have a look at the expression. And here we are on the move. Our judges appear to have their post-it notes. Our boxer will be on the blue marker, a bearded collie on red. <coughs> See where our votes will be, stewards. Collecting those votes now. <laughs> we have our votes in. One vote for the boxer. One vote for the bearded collie. And the bearded collie is going through to the next round. More. All right. Doing a one more lap. As they make their way out. And next puppies. Can't see them right at the gate there. Hopefully they're ready to go. So our top 32 will be whittled down to top 16, top 8, top 4, and then our uh, Here we go with our beagle and the whippet. Two hounds. Both up on the table.
our beagle. You may recognise from Border Patrol. Maybe not this specific beagle, but the beagles in general. Good scent hounds. Beautiful outline there. Well done. And beagle puppy making his way around. My mother's comment when I was a kid with beagles and their scent. They can track anything. Amazing dogs. But she said once they get out, they get on the scent. It's hard for them to remember how to get home. <laughs> so you need to keep them in unless you're with them. Now a different type of hound, of course the beagle scent hound, a whippet. Um, traditionally more of a hunting hound, obviously smaller, so not not bringing down lions or anything. But uh, that's where the hound group is. Whippets are built for speed. All right, bringing our whippet around. Our judges grabbing their post-it pads. Now our beagle will be on the blue mark. Our whippet on the red. All right, judges have all marked their pads. The ring steward collecting off camera. This is a tough point as a handler because you, you want your dog to be looking beautiful, but the paper's marked, it's done. You've done all you can do at this stage as you sit in front of that marker thinking, are they gonna vote for me? One vote for the Whippet, one vote for the Beagle. And it's the Beagle, two blue votes, sending the Beagle through to the top 16. As we do one more little lap, and our last two puppies to be examined, ready to come through. All right, I'm trying to sticky beak outside the ring as they get ready. It looks like we have another Dachshund coming through and a Cocker Spaniel, our last pairing. All righty. We're getting down to the pointy end now. So these are the last two dogs that our judges will, hand, what they call a hands-on examination, where they feel for the structure of the bone underneath the shoulders and the hindquarters, where they really get down and see what the mouth looks like, feel how the tail joins onto the body, you know, get their fingers under the ears, see where the ear leather falls. All those things that the judges are checking, you wouldn't even think about, but they're all described in the standard that judges are judging how close each dog is to that standard. Our Cocker Spaniel at the back. As around the ring, people start to gather in closer. These are our last of our top 32 puppies. So once we have a winner here, the judges won't need to do the hands-on examinations anymore. We're gonna be going two by two and the decisions will be happening a lot faster. Right. 
All right, now Ducky ready to do the out and back. It is tough for the puppies under these lights. In Queensland, in summer, we tend to do most of our summer shows under lights because it's just too hot during the day. It's not fair on the dogs. So they do get used to it, but having just come into summer, it is something that they need to get used to. The shadows on the ground um, are different. You know, most dogs aren't under floodlights, as a general rule. No, it's different, it takes a while to adjust. <laughs> All righty, our last out and back for the puppies and the hands-on first round. Cocker Spaniel. Beautiful, beautiful puppy. <laughs> and as we come to a beautiful natural stand. Around. And judges really having a good look at this little Cocker Spaniel on the move. Not to be confused with our American Cocker Spaniel you may remember seeing earlier in the evening. Two separate breeds, two separate breed standards. <laughs> All right, finishing up our top 32 puppies of the year for 2018. You'll think you'll find from here on we'll be moving through our decision making. We can hope a lot more quickly. All right, we've handed over our post-its. Okay. We have three the same colour. Three the same colour. And the colour is red. The Cocker Spaniel will be going through, the last one through to the top 16. All right, the Cocker Spaniel doing a lap in front. The Ducky a slightly little lap behind. All right, here we go. All right. Stafford and an Af Staffordshire Bull Terrier. I should use their full names. And an Afghan Hound. I think we're literally just going to go round the ring and straight to the markers. Seems to be what we're doing. Okay, I'm not sure how much you can hear of the uh, presenter, but uh, so where we're at now, if they're knocked out at this stage, the dog not going through for being in the top 16 will be presented with a beautiful rosette. The dog that is going through to the top eight will walk out and see what prize they'll win in the next round. The Afghan will be going through to the top eight. So our Staffordshire Bull Terrier will be presented with our beautiful rosette. And are we going to do victory laps this time? Well, more laps around the ring. <laughs> All right.
this pairing, uh, Dachshund Miniature Smooth and American Cocker Spaniel, straight to the markers. Makes it a bit easier too, the judges now, they don't have to keep handing their pads backwards and forwards to the steward. They're just standing there, notepads in hand, ready to pick, 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 pick. All right, we're ready to announce who's going through to the top eight. Okay, I have a blue. One for the ducky. One for the cocker. The American Cocker Spaniel is going through. The Dachshund Miniature Smooth presented with a beautiful rosette. No, I'm sorry, I made an error. Oh, no. Have we made a mistake here? Let's raise it. It's up for the next round. We show managers. We make mistakes. So, yes, sorry, those are up for the next round. Okay, the mistake isn't who's going through the top eight. Thank goodness. I thought we were going to have a, a next top model moment there. So, uh, what I've been saying is that the... Rosette is being presented to the dog, not going through to the top eight. Our presenter has just said, actually, that's we've got our eyes crossed there. So the dog that is going through is presented with the rosette to wear in the next round. All right. In front, our long hair Weimarana and our Belgian Shepherd Gronendale behind. Judge is already making a decision. Oh, they got not a quick, not a quick one. There seem to be some sort of uh, a few pauses in the judges between these two here. Our Weimaraner on blue, our Belgian Shepherd on red. Okay, okay. We have a, blue. a vote for the a Y, a vote for the Shepherd. And, and the Belgian Shepherd is going through. All right. And And these two together. I think these two handlers may know each other. <laughs> Our Staffordshire Bull Terrier on the blue marker. Our Kerry Blue on the red marker. Competition for the ages, this one. Judges haven't marked their papers yet. This is a hard choice for them. I'm sure they're all difficult, but um, it's just interesting to see. Sometimes they, they mark quickly. Sometimes they seem to take a little bit more time. All right, we have, a, we have our pages marked. Let's <laughs> see A vote for the Stafford. A vote for the Kerry. And a red. A red. It's the Kerry blue going through. Oh, that's so good.
All right. And our next round. A Pomeranian will be first. Looks like we have our littlest one in the in the day and our biggest one. A Pomeranian making a circle as our German Shepherd. There we go. Making a much bigger circle. <laughs> Straight to the markers. Judges already jotting down on their paper their choice. <laughs> All right. Our choice is there being transferred through to our stewards, over to our announcer. That is a very cute little Pomeranian. The smoosh. All right, who have we got our votes for? One for the palm. One for the shepherd. And a red. And a red. The German shepherd dog will be going through. Mm -hmm. All right, so going around, We're making our way out the ring for the next two to come through. All right. Our Italian Greyhound. And our boxer making their way to the red marker. Straight to the marker. Judges handing their choices over to stewards. All right, our votes are in. And one vote for the boxer, a vote for the Italian Greyhound. And the Italian Greyhound will be going through. The Italian Greyhound, number 117 will go through to the next round and becomes a red. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So for this round we have the PBG Wings and the Dear Collins. Alright, our Petite Bassett making his way to the marker and the Bearded Collie. Nice to know you're awake up there, yeah? <laughs> okay, our judge is just standing, observing it for the moment. Unanimous decision for this round. And the colour is red. Red. The bearded collie will be going through to the next round. Bearded 
All right, here we are for the last two for our top 16. Beagle in front, Cocker Spaniel behind, making their way to the markers. Answer has the votes. One for the Cocker Spaniel. One for the Beagle. The Cocker Spaniel will be going through to the next round. Okay, here we are, down to our top eight. We'll keep them moving. Of course, you've seen them all before now. It's literally coming down to a Red or blue showdown now. The Afghan and the American Cocker Spaniel. A unanimous vote. The Afghan going through, top four. A beautiful rosette for the American Cooker Spaniel for making the top eight. Our next two waiting in the wings. We've got our Belgian Shepherd ready. Who's following the Belgian Shepherd? The Kerry Blue. Judge is standing by. The one judge holding their piece of paper up and then not wanting to give it to the steward. <laughs> That's over now. All right. Who's going through the top four? There is a red. One vote blue for the carry. Blue. One vote for the shepherd. The carry blue going through the top four. Rounding out our top eight now, I think. Our German Shepherd in the front. And the Italian Greyhound behind.
One vote for the Shepherd, one for the Italian Greyhound. It's the German Shepherd going through the top four. Oh, I was wrong. We have one more pairing for the top eight. There we go. Okay, our last pairing for the top eight. A bearded collie will be on the blue mark. The cocker spaniel on red. Straight to the marker. Judges have already handed over their choices. I have three the same colour again. A unanimous vote this time. The colour is blue. The bearded collie going through to the top four. Is <laughs> it trying to bolt out the of the ring. So our top four. In the wings, okay. The Afghan and the Kerry Blue. An even bigger rosette for the person that stays in the top four. One will go through to compete for the puppy of the year. Votes are in. A unanimous vote to go through to the top two. The Afghan is going through the top two. the top four, a German Shepherd dog, a bearded collie, two working dogs, making their way to their markers. Judges have seemed to be in a bit of a rhythm now. Before the dogs even arrived at their markers, we've got some decisions being written on paper. Beautiful big rosettes ready to be delivered. <laughs> One vote for the shepherd. One for the bearded collie. A bearded collie and the Afghan are our top two puppies. Well, the rosettes are just getting bigger and bigger. I just got a little glimpse of the puppy of the year rosette. It's bigger than the Pomeranian. <laughs> all right, here we are. This is what we've been waiting for all evening. Our top two puppies of the year for 2018.
down to our final two. So our best puppy and runner-up will be either an Afghan or a bearded collie. A big cheer as they make their way around. As the handlers set their dogs for the final decision for the Puppy of the Year competition, judges have made their decision as to who will be the Puppy of the Year for 2018. Oh. oh, here we are. We're going to find out our prizes just to keep us in suspense. We've got beautiful rosettes. The winner will be the Afghan. the Afghan is the puppy of the year for 2018 with one vote for the bearded collie and two for the Afghan hound. So whether you heard it, I'm not sure. The winner will receive the beautiful big rosette, some dog food from Royal Cannon, a sea crate and their name on the perpetual trophy. The runner-up puppy has got another beautiful rosette. Uh, some food and a jacket from Cannon, and also a pair of grooming scissors. All right, now if the trends from earlier are anything to go by, I'd say we'll probably do a lap of honour, and we'll be back shortly for Dog of the Year.